Hello, 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 wonderful and amazing people of God. Good, good afternoon and praise the God of all flesh and the Father of all spirits. To him alone do we ascribe greatness, power, majesty, dominion, wisdom. And abundant grace. Hallelujah. This afternoon I'm coming to you again with the word of truth. I, I think this will be the last series on grace. And uh, we've done grace, salvation. You know, talked about uh, the saving grace. We've talked about knowing the God of grace. And then today we're going to talk about the enabling grace. The enabling grace. Hallelujah. According to Reverend Ancheba, he says, The enabling grace divinely empowers and helps the believer to do the things which they are called to do without struggle. The saving grace otherwise saved us to become God's children. But we are divinely em- enabled to perform our various assignments by the enabling grace. There should not be any room for excuses and failure. Unquote. And so here, Reverend Chapa was encouraging us or bringing us the awareness that there is a saving grace and also the enabling grace. This enabling grace empowers us to fulfill the mandate of God on our individual lives without fail and without struggle. Dearly beloved, grace does not, it's not limited to the saving grace. Grace is so much more than just salvation. I use that word just tentatively because the ultimate love of God is expressed in the salvation of the souls of man. However, I don't want us to dwell on only, not use, just use, not using just, but only the love of God to save humanity. And I think that the lack of understanding about what this grace is, is that which had limited many people and also made many people talk about grace only in the area of salvation and that encouraging people to understand that it it was not by works or it's still not by works. So whatever you do, does not negate the fact that the love of God expressed in the grace of God is still can save and will save you. And that is where the error happens. Our limitation or the limitation of the revelation of understanding in grace had caused many people to err. So today we're going to talk about the enabling grace. And in the enabling grace, uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 8 says, God is able to make all grace abound towards us. That you having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Hallelujah. So, the grace of God gives us what it takes to be sufficient in the assignment, in the things that God has called us to. And not just to be able to fulfill it, but also to abound. To abound means simply to increase. So you see, grace also enables us to increase in the things that God has mandated us to do. Hallelujah. And it's it's such a beautiful um, revelation and understanding into the dimensions of grace. So that we would never be limited to the saving grace and then think that That is all that grace does. But grace is so, so much more. Hallelujah. 
In 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 18, our dear Apostle Peter says, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When Peter was talking about this aspect of grace, he was talking about our level growing in the our level in maturity. When you grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, you are simply growing as mature Christians. When we understand that, it was by grace that God saved us. And so we can also extend grace to those who offend us or those who miss the back in relation to us. Because the Bible says, even whilst we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. So Christ what showed us grace and mercy by saving us. And so as we grow in grace, as we mature in grace, what we are doing is that we are having revelation of the fact that if Christ can forgive us, even whilst we're yet sinners, then we can give, forgive others when they sin against us too. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? And another, another level that Paul also talked about, uh, no, oh no, actually, look when he was writing the book of Acts. He says, and with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. Hallelujah. Hey, this is such a profound scripture. So there is another another level of grace that um, uh, 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 Luke was talking about. Yes, and he is saying that, and this 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 grace is the power of God to do or to bear witness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Bearing witness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ is great demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. Because immediately the Bible talks about, immediately the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit. For Peter and John, the first miracle was what? Okay, for Peter on its own, the first miracle was his ability to talk to 3,000 people, more than three, and then 3,000 gave their lives to Christ. That very person who was hiding, that person who was denying Jesus in the presence of servants, now he was able to speak, giving witness of Christ's resurrection, the very moment that he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. And then afterwards, just the next chapter afterwards, with John, Peter, they were going to the temple in a time of prayer, saw a cripple at the beautiful gate. And what happens there? There was a demonstration of the resurrection power of God. That is when the commanded the, the cripple to rock, to walk, to walk. Somebody who have sat there from, from childhood, now, by the, the witness and the power of the Holy Spirit, according to the grace of God on their lives. Hey! And the Bible talks about this grace, not just last grace, but great grace. Great grace. That great grace that made people just, just line up, line up and, and sick people and dead people on the streets that as Peter ba- passed by, his shadow can, can heal them and, 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 and then what? And then cast out demons and, and, and Paul and Paul what? And Paul raised the dead and, and Peter raised the dead. <laughs> I mean, raising the dead was so common in the time, during the time of disciples because they had great grace. The revelation to even teach us, to pre- present us, the inspiration that they had was grace by grace. Paul had, I mean, a super, super abounding grace. Because he had much more revelation about Christ, his death and his resurrection than the others. But who is comparing? The Bible says, but an in great grace was upon them all. And with great power and the great, great power, the apostles gave witness. Not just one person, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
Oh, hallelujah. Dearly beloved, grace is so much more than what we think. And there is another dimension of grace. <laughs> and this grace is a proportion of grace. It's a proportion of grace that God gives us, even in ministry. You know, how many times haven't we heard that, my goodness, this man has grace in the prophetic. Talking about anointing. But you see that word grace and anointing is used interchangeably when it comes to performance. And the level and the depths of the grace of God or the life of a person to fulfill an agenda. Dearly beloved, we are not all the same. We are saved, same in grace, filled with the same Holy Spirit. That, that doesn't differ. But when it comes to the grace and the workings of God, according to the Bible, it says that having then gifts differing according to the grace of God given to us, whether it be prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Hallelujah. So the Bible is say, the Bible is saying that the grace that is upon us, they are different. They are different according to Romans chapter 12 and verse 6. We have gifts that is differing. Differing means diverse according to the grace that is given to us. And even in prophecy, some prophesy, we should all prophesy according to the grace, according to the proportion of faith. Listen, are, we all have limitations, spheres, and measures. The limitation in our boundaries of operation, the sphere, our scope of influence, and the measure of faith, the measure in which God has given us. And that measure is different from every everybody. Some, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, the centurion said to Jesus, I'm also a man under authority. And I said to this one, go and go, come and they come. He was saying that he has a level of authority. It was a centurion means he, had, he was a ruler over 100 people. And Paul, Paul talked about some have, a, you know, um, dominion over 50, 100, thousands. The grace of God. Some have a church. Of 50 people and they're happy. Some have a church of hundreds. They're happy. Some have thousands. They're happy. Other, others have tens and thousands. These are all different graces. The reason why we can't compare is that God has given us different gifts according to the grace. Different. There is a grace, but it's different. From you and from I and the other person. Some can prophesy about local things. Maybe family issues. God will speak to them about things happening in their family. Powerful, all well and good. Others also have dimensions into nations. Others have continents. Others have, others have the whole world at their disposal. They can see, God can he show them things about any part of the world. But others are limited to just family or maybe the church community. Does it mean that somebody's own is better than the others? No, God determines it. And God is saying to us that our graces differ. Our anointings differ. Our strengths, I may say, differs. Oh, hallelujah. Dearly beloved, this is a great exhortation. Even, 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 even in, 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 in ministry, and that is in, in teaching, it, it says, the verse 7 says that, or in ministry, let us wait on, on ministry or that, or, or he that teacheth on teaching. So you see, oh, it says, those who are teachers of the word, let them limit themselves to teaching. Those who exalt, let them limit themselves to exhortation. Let them do it with simplicity. And those who rule, let them rule with diligence. And he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. So you see that even though it's the same body of Christ, the graces, the assignments, everything differs. And that is what 
uh, Paul was talking about in the verse 6. The gifts are different. And we call them all grace. So everybody's grace and everybody's assignment is different. And even the proportions of it. Because we can all be teachers, but some can have a level of the teaching grace that is greater than others. Really, beloved, is the sovereignty of God. It doesn't mean that we can't even learn to be better teachers. What I'm saying is that it's God who gives that diverse and that level and that power and that measure of grace to all of us. Then finally, we're going to look at even how uh, people respond to others. I mean, we all knew about Madam, Madam, Madam Theresa. Some of you see her and you are angry <laughs> because oh, she was everywhere. That woman had compassion for everybody, anywhere. She didn't limit. She wasn't limited to India. She was an Asian. She was an Indian. But that woman's love for humanity was glaring for all to see. So even in treatment of others, some have compassion for orphans. Some have special compassion for. The elderly. These are all graces. In the treatment of others. In our relationship with others. I have some unusual compassion for men. And it's the grace of God. It didn't just come. God gave me that burden in my heart. And compassion for men. And sometimes somebody will not understand why. Because I'm a woman. Oh yes, I'm a woman. But it didn't just come. God put it in there. It is a grace. And I have strong grace for intercession. A very strong grace for intercession. Some I, some I pray for half an hour, one hour and be okay. I have to go several hours. And I didn't just have it. God put it there. It's a level, it's a dimension of grace. To intercede before God for several hours. Dearly beloved, God has given all of us a level, a measure of grace. And an enabling power that makes us, some have gift in decoration, it's grace. Gift in fashion, it's grace. Gift in music, it's grace. Gift in, in, in administration, it's grace. I tell you, if you give me anything administration, who? That means that you don't want you don't, you don't want that whatever you want to do to <laughs> to be more to be fruitful because my my concept of administration is very limited because I don't have the grace for it. Well, you just leave me, give me an opportunity to speak. Maybe that is where my grace is, or to pray. That is where my grace is, dearly beloved. We all have it. Whether it be on our fingers, whether it be in our eyes, art, bringing the beauty of God on canvas, or making things with your hands, or walking in the supernatural. We know some men of God who had special graces for hunchback, like the Louis Palos, the uh, Tiel Osborne for cripples, the Benihins. For cripples and other dimensions of it. Some have special uh, ministries, graces, yeah, special graces. Because even in the healing ministry, the, 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 the Bible talks about as uh, what, what, uh, healings, the gifts of healings. So it's not even limited to one thing, dimensions of it. And some have different graces for different sicknesses. Some have special grace for cancer. You, they, they lay hands on a cancer patient, that's it. So you see, we don't have it all, but we have all have enabling grace. God has given us all an enabling grace to work effect, effectively and efficiently to give witness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So if you don't know it yet, find out and let's use this grace, this enabling grace, to magnify our Lord 
and King. Shalom, shalom, 